Hey everybody, my name is Stacey Klein. I'm a program specialist with Santa Ana Unified School District in career technical education, part of the Santa Ana Unified Teaching Learning Department. And my presentation for our August 24 professional development is get googly with Google Educator Level 1 certification. You got this. So we're going to connect it to our Santa Ana Unified graduate profile. Our focus for August and September 24 is teachers and students becoming architects of their own learning. This is a huge component of the graduate profile. We want to empower our fellow educators and our students to be lifelong learners, but how do they do that? How do they become architects of learning? As an architect of learning, I'm a lifelong learner with a spirit of inquiry who sets goals and persists through challenges while maintaining a state of well-being. There are six components to this. And these are huge. This is, it's important to seek out new information, to always ask questions and make connections to what you already know. You want to de demonstrate a growth mindset. You want resilience because as you have an open mind and you're learn learning new things and acquiring new skills, you, you never become out of date. I set personal and academic goals and develop a plan to meet those goals. So whether it's your master's degree, whether it's another teaching credential, um, whether it is your high school diploma, all these things are goals uh, that with persistence and resilience you will be able to accomplish. I take ownership of my learning. I monitor my progress towards these goals. For an example, this PD is choose your own adventure style learning. So if you're in this PD, you're interested in getting your Google certification. I make responsible choices and advocate for my health, emotional well-being, and learning. It's important for you to take care of the whole person. And I'm self-aware and I can regulate my own emotions. Looking at the learning model, we're competency-based, inclusive and equitable, personalized and authentic. It is very important that all voices are heard. They don't need somebody explaining for them. They need to use their own voice. We need to amplify the voices of others. We need to be inclusive and equitable. We need to be competency-based because when someone can prove their learning by demonstrating their mastery, then you know they've truly learned the content. We want it personalized. We want it to be student driven. We want it to be student centered, student focused. And we want it to be authentic. It, if it's meaningful, it's useful for our students and our faculty uh, in the real world. So with that being said, this is a Google Educator Level 1 task review. This will help you prepare for and pass the Level 1 uh, exam to become a Google Certified Educator. Um, in 2016, I became a Google Certified Educator Level 1 then level two, and then later that year, I became a Google certified trainer. All of these things have helped me in my professional development to help others um, become certified, but also use all these Google Workspace for Education tools in their teaching and learning. These, our students are extremely resilient. They're very much tech savvy, but nobody learns automatically. They need a guide, they need a coach, and all of these uh, tools that you learn, you'll be able to demonstrate that earn your certification, but also the most important thing is how to teach your students to use these incredible uh, tools that are available in the cloud. I'm not going to go through all 96 slides. Um, this is usually a four hour course. I'm going to go over a few of the things in that will be in my presentation. My presentation will be 75 minutes long. So I'm going to teach you some test taking strategies, how to prep, how to use the online tools with the Google website and I promise you will pass your level one certification. It is a straightforward exam. We are a Google uh, for education, Google Workspace for Education uh, School District, and it's tools that we use every single day. So level one, piece of cake. You have three hours to take the exam. They are multiple choice or short answer questions. There's no large project-based um, questions anymore in this exam. They're trying to streamline it to make it more accessible to all educators because you are in an online testing environment where you're monitored, things like that. So they're trying to lower the affect of the, the, uh, the lower the, the stress level for our teachers. So, uh, and it's still very authentic learning. So with, with the level one exam, there are basic tasks you're going to do in Google Drive, skills to master. You'll be able to click on all these links in these slides. So even if you don't attend my session, all of these slides are very, very helpful for you to prep. I recommend going through all of them, practice all the, the released questions, and then you'll know what to expect. With these tips, the reason I like people to take all the released questions is you learn how 
this system asks questions. Part of being a strong test taker means understanding what the test is asking you. Are they wording their questions in a confusing manner to make sure you really know what you're doing? Um, there's no, I don't, no one's trying to trick you, but they may be asking you something a little vague to see, make sure you know exactly which one you're talking about. So when you take these practice questions, you're developing your fitness, you're testing fitness, and you understand how long it takes to take the exam, you understand what they're looking for, and it helps you with your coping skills, with your resilience, and your ability to persevere through the exam. So you can see there are Google Drive sections, there's Google Docs, there's things that you already know how to do, and if you don't, each one of these links will show you how to do that, and you'll be ready for this exam. I will go through a good portion of each of these examples, and depending on who's in each session, we can address the ones that you may find confusing. And again, many, much of this is uh, the user, uh, user driven. So we have our docs and Google Classroom is a big part of it. Even if you don't use Google Classroom, that's okay. It's still part of the exam and it shows your a level of competency. Google Chrome is central to the Google Workspace environment. It shows you how to add extensions, uh, specifically the, the Chrome Omnibox to search for resources. It's not just a search bar. There's all sorts of things you can do, calculator, things like that. And Gmail, things that you can do through Gmail, how you communicate. A lot of us use Gmail because the students use Gmail. So we're masters at not only Microsoft Outlook, but our Gmail. And calendar is huge. You can book resources in a lab. You can book your um, time that you can meet with parents or students, tutoring hours, things like that. Uh, you can publish a calendar. So if you are the coach of a particular group, you can publish a calendar that people can subscribe to. It's a fantastic resource for, um, to share with your families and your students. Okay. How to set up Google Meets. You can do those directly through calendar or email. Google Slides, which is what I'm using today. This is an extremely powerful tool. Sitting in the cloud, super helpful, very powerful. And there's a few little tricks. Remember, this is level one. We're not looking for level two or rock star status. This is the basic skills you already know. Google Forms. Um, I know many of you, like me, live, um, survive with Google Forms. This is how we get our data. Google Forms grabs the data. It's very targeted data. If you learn to write your questions very specifically um, and not vaguely, you'll get some good data that you can sort in the spreadsheets. So this is hugely helpful. And Google Sites is how you, many, even though we do have a district website and, and, and that's a great resource, it, sometimes it's more functional for you to use a Google Site. So many of our other um, programs are in a Google site that we then link to with our district site, but Google sites are extremely powerful. They're also really helpful for students as they build their portfolios. Many of you are familiar with uh, senior exit portfolios, and those are driven by Google sites. YouTube is hugely important. If there's something you want to learn in this world, it's on YouTube. Someone is sharing how to do this, how to become an expert at this. You can create channels, you can um, create playlists, um, then your students will know exactly what resources they have at their fingertips without having to spend hours Googling. And of course, sheets. Uh, spreadsheets cause a lot of anxiety for people. I wanna assuage your uh, fears. Um, 25 years ago, I might've been a spreadsheet uh, fearful, but not anymore. This is the best way to sort data. Um, you, it, whether you get it from a Google form or you open the sheet up to collaborators and let them put in their information, the data, you can protect certain cells, you can protect um, certain um, data in the, in the spreadsheet, and it's a wonderful way to um, analyze data, to organize it, and to, especially for layout too. So these are the tasks you'll do with Google Sheets. Uh, Google Groups. If you are involved in an organization, I'm a long distance cyclist. I belong to multiple Google groups where we share uh, resources. It's, it's uh, text-based, so there's not any, uh, there's not a lot of noise in it. You can look at different threads. 
Um, we use these Google groups in uh, many of my professional um, organizations, and they're very, very helpful. You can um, keep a Google group very tight and a very specific group of people. Google Drawings. Yay. So you have a drawing tool that's very powerful, and it helps you um, create images. It gives students a creative workspace um, to create things. You can use images um, in anything that you need to use. And Google Meet, here's our video chat. This is great. The, you, these are scheduled through multiple platforms. Google Duo used to be on the phone. It is now all Google Meet. All the video um, in Google that is uh, person to person or device to device is, is Google Meet at this point. So it's very, very useful, very powerful. Adding more functions all the time. So there'll be very specific skills that you'll exam. Is text driven in exam, you'll be given a prompt and, and some choices, or it might be mat, uh, drag and drop or matching. Okay, and that's it. I hope that uh, you'll enjoy the session, and, and I just don't want you to worry about um, anything on the exam because uh, you know, you've got you, you can handle it. You're going to become a Google certified, googly educator. <laughs>